Ladies and gentlemen, there's a serious and life-threatening epidemic going on in our grade schools. It has the power to completely destroy a young man's education, to throw the entire school day off track, compromising the education of millions. I'm referring, of course, to young women's exposed shoulders, thighs, tight, revealing yoga pants. This injustice is sweeping our nation, and it needs to be stopped. that time of the year again. Dress codes have been a point of controversy for the last few years, and I think rightfully so. Actually, in all honesty, I find arguing about dress codes to be the most mundane problem of all mundane problems that plagues our Western society. I genuinely think it is the most mundane issue ever. 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 Island High School administrators gave nearly 200 female students detention for wearing shorts in the sweltering heat of summer. Didn't yeah, because it's not like you couldn't have just worn looser clothing. Well, it's not like you could have just worn bright colors so that the light would reflect the sunlight that beamed upon you. Yeah, I know, funny thing, if you actually paid attention in school and pay attention in science class, you'll learn about the laws of refraction, and you'll learn that if you wear brighter colors, you'll actually end up being cooler when you're out in the sun because the light then reflects off the clothing. But if you wear black, you know, then the light will be more attracted to you. I know, man, interesting stuff you learn when you actually pay attention in school instead of trying to dress like a streetwalker. <sighs> wow, who would have actually thought? Schools provide education. Not a platform for you to go look for attention. Distracting, they said. It is distracting. If it's a distraction, I greatly appreciate it. A middle school in California held a mandatory assembly for girls only and pulled them out of class to tell them they can't wear yoga pants or leggings. It must be a sad time to be a boy in middle school. A sad time, huh? Oh, the misandry. Not allowing those boys to see those nice, beautiful butts in yoga pants. That is unfortunate for those guys. Distract they said. It is distracting. I mean, they're, they're not wrong. A kindergarten student in Georgia was changed without her mother's notification or permission because her skirt was too short. Distracting. So distracting. For a pedophile. Who exactly is distracted by a kindergartner's skirt? You're not going to like the answer. According to hundreds of schools in the U.S., it's boys and perhaps even male faculty. That's uncomfortable. Then maybe you should dress accordingly. So that way the male faculty won't be distracted or attracted to you. Considering the fact that you are going through puberty and you probably look really good right now. Yeah, I'm just saying. Students who are coming forward with these stories often come with tales of inappropriate comments from the administration like, you shouldn't be showing off your curves. Don't you want a husband someday? The school's dress code violators are skanks. <laughs> wow, they actually say that to students? They must be going to a school out in the projects or in the ghetto because that is just not something you hear every day, huh? Boys are bad, and that kind of shirt is going to cause them to misbehave. That's disgustingly sexist. Okay, that makes sense. Wait, no it doesn't. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. It's just that you're a buffoon, Lacey. You know what? Lacey Green should become synonymous with a complete idiot. Maybe I should start doing that. Whenever I say Lacey Green, uh, maybe I should just make it synonymous with the word lacks understanding of reality. Maybe that might be a better definition of the word Lacey Green. I'm calling it right now. That's what Lacey Green means. One who lacks understanding of reality. To be clear, the problem with this trend is not that there are guidelines for dress. We have guidelines for work and weddings and interviews and outdoor activities and schools. Guidelines themselves aren't the problem. The problem is when these codes target girls specifically. Lacey, dress codes do not target girls specifically. Dress codes target everybody, everybody, everyone, even the boys. Boys can't wear hoodies in class. They also can't wear shirts that have obscene words or obscene imagery on there. They also can't wear hats in the middle of class either, or they can't have their headphones in their ears. And there's a reason for that. The same reason why girls can't have yoga pants or really short shorts, you know, so short that the cuff of their butt is hanging out. And I've seen it. I actually just saw it the other day, and it was a distraction. I greatly appreciate it. What was I talking about now? Because of the mentality that their bodies are sexual and therefore distracting. 
Well, they're not wrong. So here are five reasons why dress code double standards are kind of definitely sexist. Number one, it tells girls, many of whom are children, that their bodies are inherently sexual. Newsflash, it is. You're a human being, of course. After you hit puberty, your body becomes sexual. I mean, children, no. Children don't have any real sex appeal to them. At least not to a mature adult. Unfortunately, to pedophiles they do, which is an odd condition, but to most regular normal people, children have zero sex appeal. However, teenagers who are going through puberty look a lot older than what they actually are. And I've also seen different studies that say girls who grow up without dads actually mature a lot faster. So even though they're young, I mean, I've actually seen 15-year-olds who look like they're 21, like, 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 legitimately. Like, I saw a 13-year-old who looks like she's 16. Like, I mean... Like, some of these girls are, like, maturing really, really fast in our society today. Some. Not all, but some. And so, they are kind of distracting to some boys, because they're also going through puberty. Also, she's not entitled to human decency and respect if her skin is showing. No, they are teaching this young girl the reality of the world. And the reality of the world is, well, the way you dress has an effect on how people address you. It's just slut-shaming, but it's also objectifying. Yeah, but you want to know the interesting thing about that whole objectification thing? Some of these girls are purposely dressing in a manner that makes boys objectify them because they want sexual attention from boys. Go figure, right? It tells girls that their bodies are more sexual than boys. She is the object, he is the subject, the consumer. Girls come to see their bodies through the lens of uncontrollable male desire instead of her own wants and her own needs. Really? That's true. That she sees her body through the uncontrollable urge of a man's needs. Well, if that is true, then that would mean that she's purposely doing that. And since she's purposely doing that, she can just not. This is a process called self-objectification, and it's been linked to trillions of times by the APA to depression, mental health issues, and eating disorders. Why am I not surprised? Number two, it tells boys, many of whom are children, I might add, that girls' bodies are inherently sexual regardless of context. No, nah, boys don't need to be told that. They just have to go through puberty and they'll figure that out on their own. Sorry. I mean, human beings are sexual creatures. As a self-proclaimed sexpert, Lacey, I'm sure you of all people would know that. It teaches boys that it's acceptable to disrespect girls and misbehave if they can see her skin. Instead of teaching boys that they're responsible for their own actions, it teaches them that girls are responsible for them. Wait a minute, hold on, wait. After Lacey just said that, take a look down at the bottom of Lacey's screen and read what that says, and we're gonna come back and chat about that. This is an extraordinarily dangerous lesson that we teach boys. It's part of how we set the stage for harassment, sexual assault, and victim blaming. Now so Lacey says somehow we're teaching boys that it is a girl's fault if they are sexually harassed. However, the statement, boys will be boys, shows the complete, utter opposite of that. It actually seems that it is inherent nature of boys to sexually objectify women and only see women as sexual objects. Because, I mean, boys will just be that way. It is inherent. It does not need to be taught. That's just how they are. Which is disgustingly sexist. But not against women, you doofus. It's a sexist against boys. Number three, these dress codes are often accompanied by a nice heaping spoon of body shame because girls don't have enough of that. And no. But it's almost as if girls can solve that problem by understanding that a man will end up loving her because she is a woman. And she shouldn't primarily focus on being attractive, but she should more primarily focus on being a good person. Fat chance that'll be happening though. Administrators are subjecting them to degrading screenings, complete with comments like, you know, not all dresses look good on certain body types. Damn, she is getting all up in that ass, man. That's a ranking session starting right there. They actually say that to kids? Man, what a time to be a kid in the um, educational system. What a time to be a kid. You can't look at hot girls no more because they can't wear dress, I mean, they can't wear yoga pants and short shorts. And then the, the freaking administrators are making fun of the students. Wow. No wonder the education system in America sucks. Step before, administrators are punishing girls with detention, public humiliation, expulsion, mandatory assemblies. What's the real distraction here? Title IX prohibits sex-based discrimination and hostility at school. These accommodations for boys cannot legally come at the expense of girls' education. Now yeah, you're right. That's why dress code is applied to boys and girls. Number five, the thing that seems to be flying over all these administrators' heads, the reality of middle school and high school is this. Everybody is distracted. 
everybody's bodies are changing, crushes, it's all new, it's all exciting, and it is not just boys. Henceforth, my dress code affects everyone. Lacey. Girls have sexual feelings too. I know, right? Mind blowing. Why is it always girls that are the problem? Because it's usually girls who wear super short shorts and it's usually girls who wear yoga pants. You don't really see very many boys doing that. All those feelings, excitement, distraction is just as real for girls as it is for boys, even though we try to pretend that girls don't have a sexuality of their own. We need to teach girls and boys healthy and respectful ways to deal with their feelings so that they can function and have a strong foundation at work, school, and in relationships in the future. Lacey, that is part of the purpose of having the dress code in the first place. This is my common sense announcement of the day. Some have raised concerns about the pressures on girls to show their skin in the first place. I know, because it's not like they can just not. While many of the violations that I reviewed are hardly risque, it's totally true that we are bombarded with hypersexualized images of women and we do feel those pressures. The most ironic part of all of that is half the time those women don't even actually exist. You're comparing yourself to literal fiction, which is a gigantic waste of time. I know, it's going to take years and lots of times to unwire that programming that has been ingrained to you as a child that you should primarily care about the way you look, but in all actuality, a man is probably going to end up loving you because you are a woman, and you don't really need to worry so much about the way you look. But if you wish to continue to do so, I mean, that's up to you. I'm just... That's just... That's up to you. I'm just a nigga on the internet. But... Big but... Not in an objectifying way. Yes, thank you for explaining that to me, Lacey, because I just have zero understanding of the English language. That problem is not combated by reinforcing our status as sex objects in the dress code. Hypersexualization can be combated by empowering girls to feel comfortable in their own skin, addressing the pressures we feel and making spaces to talk about them, and by encouraging girls to wear whatever they feel happy and comfortable in, to dress for themselves and nobody else. Ironically enough, man, dress codes are not the only thing that Teachers claim are there to remove distractions. If you think about it logically for a second, you'll notice that you can't talk in the middle of class. You can't answer your cell phone in the middle of class. You can't text in the middle of class. You can't even talk to your friends in the middle of class. In some schools or in some colleges, if you answer text message while a teacher is lecturing, they will tell you to get out. The whole point of all of those different rules are to avoid distractions. You're not special there. There are rules everywhere in schools with the primary goal to avoid distractions. Now, if some of you people are wondering as to why I so snarkily and harshly criticize girls for complaining about the fact that they can't wear short shorts or they can't dress like streetwalkers, I want you guys to keep something in context. Have some perspective. You see, because over on the other side of our planet, there have been stories of children being led out of their classrooms by criminal organizations, right? These kids are forced to get on their knees, put their hands on their head, a gun is placed to the back of their skulls, and a trigger is pulled, and they're dead for trying to get an education. In all honesty, this is without a shadow of a doubt the most mundane issue that plagues our American society. There are children who get killed every single day for the privilege of being in a learning institution that you so oftenly complain about because you can't look like a streetwalker in the middle of class. <sighs> Ain't that some shit. With that being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, meh, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below, and as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.